I am for free trade and uh, normally would be uh, for a trade agreement, but in this case I'm leaning no, and one of the reasons is, as I pointed out to one of the, the whip team, is that uh, if a constituent came up to me in my district and asked uh, what has more authority, the Constitution or TPA, uh, how would you answer that? And he said, obviously the Constitution. And I said, well, here's the follow-up. If the president won't abide by the Constitution, what gives you any confidence that he will, uh, will abide by TPA? Uh, and his response were the safeguards. Well, when it takes 60 votes in the Senate, I don't think that we have any safeguards. The other thing that I, I find uh, troubling about this is, is that the president promotes this in the context of creating jobs for American workers, yet he uh, vetoed the, Keystone, the, uh, the construction of the Keystone pipe, uh, XL pipeline when his own White House estimated that thousands, tens of thousands of jobs would be created uh, by completion of, of the pipeline. Uh, there are other uh, um, activities that the, the president's this administration is engaged in, particularly with the new ozone rules, the water rules, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions that are killing jobs in the United States. And I, I, I have a real problem uh, with a with, uh, president promoting trade as a, a means of, of um, creating jobs when they're, they're taking actions that have a devastating impact on the economy. There are 93 million able-bodied Americans out of the workforce. One other thing, in reading the bill, there's a section in there that deals with cybersecurity and basically says this, and, and, and I'm paraphrasing, that uh, nations should avoid uh, committing cyber crimes. Okay? I don't think avoid is a strong enough word. As a matter of fact, I think we ought to, to require that any nation that engages in, 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 in breaches of cybersecurity in the United States, whether it's the, uh, a government agency or the private sector, would be excluded from a trade agreement, and we need to do that now before we start negotiating any kind of trade agreement with China. Congressman Bratt, would you like to weigh in? Yeah, I'll weigh in. Thank you very much. Uh, trade is hugely important. I've taught economics for the past 18 years. When I started teaching economics 20 years ago, the Chinese and Indians made roughly $700 a year per capita. Their move toward free markets, markets are good, have lifted 2.5 billion people out of poverty. That's what we want to achieve. Everyone up on this panel cares about every single person on this planet. Sometimes that gets lost in the uh, conversation up here in the uh, kind of soundbite world we all live in. So that's the first premise. The, the latest in economics, uh, trade and tariff reduction, we've achieved a lot over the past 50 years, right? Since Bretton Woods and end of World War II, tariffs are down from 45% to 5% on average. So we've made huge gains. So what's at stake in this trade agreement are a lot of non-economic, non-pure economic variables, right? Like labor standards, environment standards, regulatory standards. President Obama calls this a very progressive trade deal, right? And so that makes my ears perk up. What's that mean, right? And so we just got done going through a major trust issue on President Obama's unconstitutional end run when it comes to amnesty and the DACA issue. In, in my view, he didn't end run around the Constitution. That's a high level principle that matters when it comes to trust. So now we're going to enter into a trade agreement where he can still, there, is, there are living sections to this trade agreement. And as Raul Labrador just explained, there are about five hurdles. If we want to say no to this progress, it's got to go through the House, the Senate, Senate Finance, Rules, and our money committee. And so that's a high hurdle if President Obama puts anything in there that we don't like. And we're promised an up or down vote at the end, but as Raul said, uh, that may not end up happening. So the latest in economics, most economists, Doug North won a Nobel Prize for this 20 years ago, institutions matter and in economics, right? So you can have free markets, but institutions matter crucially, and that's what we're talking about. Here's a relationship between the executive branch of government and the Congress, major institutions that matter for the broader free market context. Free markets don't exist in a vacuum. They exist uh, in that totality. And so I'm leaning heavy no uh, because I don't think we're taking these institutional concerns into account and it appears that the U.S. gets rolled a lot. We are still the superpower. In my view, trade should be part one tool in our toolkit that works in alignment with our national security concerns, with our military superiority, with our educational system. All of this are tools we have. The rest of the world, the Middle East, China, we have tensions. 
And we should use all of these tools, not just when the business community needs a narrow band approved. All of this should be a bundle that helps us achieve our U.S. interests. Thank you. Sorry, I went on so long. Thank you. All right, we'll come here, and then we'll come over to the front. Kelsey. Hi, I'm Kelsey Harkness with The Daily Signal. I want to switch gears to the USA Freedom Act. If the Senate rejects the bill, would you be willing to consider a compromise? And if not, how would you address concerns that cell phone companies and the likes aren't ready for the changes set forth in the bill, um, potentially leaving America more vulnerable to terrorism? Yeah, well, <laughs> if, if by compromise you mean making the bill worse, uh, reducing privacy protections, then no, uh, I would not support that, and I suspect uh, most of my colleagues would not support that. Uh, the F USA Freedom Act, as uh, currently uh, drawn up, is about as far as a lot of them will go. We still had a lot of Republican no votes and a lot of Democratic no votes. I think if they water it down anymore, uh, it'll be in real trouble. There's also no support for a clean reauthorization. Um, I think it's a waste of time for uh, Mitch McConnell to really even talk about it uh, because it has no chance here in the House and I, I believe it has no chance in the Senate. Um, we have a Constitution. We should follow the Constitution, follow the Fourth Amendment, and uh, if we're going to work on surveillance reform, we can look back at the original USA Freedom Act from 2013 or the Massey-Lofgren Amendment. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Thomas Massey. I, sus I suspect that Freedom Act is the pre-negotiated end settlement that um, the intelligence community wants. And so I believe this is just posturing right now and tactful negotiation to say that we're going to do a clean reauthorization to hold that over the heads of certain senators um, to get them to comply and then finally agree with the reserve price, which is the, F the Freedom Act that passed the House. And I, I, I didn't vote for the Freedom Act. I think it's a bad bill. Um, but I think that's what the Senate Majority Leader actually eventually wants. Yeah, I just want to echo what uh, Representative Massey said. I believe Mitch McConnell supports the USA Freedom Act. Uh, I think this is uh, posturing. Um, I don't believe these senators who object to it really object to it. They uh, accept the Freedom Act, and they're trying to uh, buy some leverage to make it even worse. Um, we need to stand strong and uh, tell them that it gets no worse. Um, and in fact, if they want to get something passed, I think they're going to need to make it actually stronger in terms of privacy protections. Um, I, I voted against the Freedom Act, be, not because it was too strong. It wasn't strong enough. It didn't protect the Fourth Amendment like it should. Um, and in fact, your question leads to one of the reasons that I voted against the Freedom Act. The, the uh, com phone companies are not ready, you know, accord according to some people for this. I don't know that I, for the, that I want the phone companies to be gathering my data either. <laughs> so I don't want the government to do it. I don't want the phone companies to do it. I don't want anybody to do it unless somebody has issued a warrant. Uh, and that's what the Fourth Amendment requires. There's a process to go through that. And, and I think what we're doing for the first time, remember the Second Circuit said that nothing in the Patriot Act allowed the bulk data collection that the government had been engaged in for the last few years. Now we're telling the, as federal government, as a Congress, we're saying that it's okay to allow that bulk data collection as long as phone companies are doing the bulk data collection and not, and not the NSA. Well, no, that's not right. We didn't allow it under the, the Patriot Act. In fact, during testimony or, or private conversations, I still haven't heard which one, the members of Congress at the time were told that there would be no bulk data collection under the Patriot Act, and yet the NSA decided to engage in bulk data collection. And now we're saying, as members of Congress, when we pass the Freedom Act, that it's okay to have bulk data collection in some instances, and in all instances, if the phone companies uh, engage in the bulk data collection and we just have an arm's length deal with them. Well, no, I'm opposed to that. 
we should allow the 215 program to end. We should, I, in fact, I think we should allow the Patriot Act to expire completely. But we need to go back to the rule of law and to our Constitution. And I don't understand. Conservatives love to talk about First Amendment, Second Amendment. Well, let's remember that there's a Third Amendment, there's a Fourth Amendment, there's a Fifth Amendment, there's all these other amendments. If we truly believe in the Constitution and we truly believe in the Bill of Rights, then let's stand up for all of them, not just for a few that makes, make us popular at our town hall meetings. Hmm. I'll just say one, one thing, uh, sort of inside baseball process uh, argument. We were told uh, here in the House we couldn't have um, Mr. Massey's amendment made an order on the floor. We actually offered it in committee. Mr. Poe offered it, and we were told, no, this can't pass. It'll ruin the deal. We have to just, we have this negotiated USA Freedom Act. Uh, that's the only thing we can do. So we couldn't have an amendment on, made an order on the floor, even though that same amendment got 293 votes last Congress. Well, now we're in the midst of an experiment. We're going to find out, is that true or not? Because in the Senate, we're going to know within the next 24 hours whether we're going to get the USA Freedom Act back here or some short-term reauthorization of the Patriot Act. And we'll see. Um, I don't think, as Mr. Massey said, a, the Patriot Act, just straight up reauthorization, I don't think that can pass. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting how this process is playing out when we were told one thing and we're going to see if that actually plays out. And, and I would encourage reporters to stop repeating the line that it ends bulk collection, that the Freedom Act ends bulk collection. It does not end bulk collection. The intelligence community likes to use the term bulk as a term of art, where they mean bulk, um, uh, where they, they use the word bulk to mean everything. So if it's anything short of everything, they say it's not bulk. Well, nobody at home thinks that way. Bulk collection includes uh, large collections short of everything in uh, uh, common speak. So uh, we should stop using that kind of language and actually uh, if you look at the Freedom Act that passed last Congress, which is also a watered-down version of the Freedom Act, very similar to the current Freedom Act, the Second Circuit mentions that version of the Freedom Act in their opinion, and the Second Circuit actually says Congress passed a watered-down version of the Freedom Act that did not end bulk collection. It's in the Second Circuit opinion. That Freedom Act is very similar to the current Freedom Act, and the Second Circuit has asserted that that version did not end bulk collection, just as this version doesn't end bulk collection. I, I also just want to encourage a reporter who's interested in doing the job to ask somebody, maybe chairman of the Select Intelligence Committee, maybe somebody at the NSA, after the Freedom Act passes, do they still believe that they have the authority to collect metadata on email and websites that you visited? if we're going to talk about bulk collection, because they assert now, and if you go back and look, they said that they ran a program where they did collect that information. They just found it to be unwieldy. And, but they still assert they have that authority. Ask them, will they have that authority after the Freedom Act passes? John. Thank you, Genevieve. I wanted to ask uh, the members of Congress, Beginning with Congressman Labrador, there's a major dispute about the trade agreements that's come up and been at the White House. I asked Press Secretary Josh Earnest if the still unseen TPP and TTIP uh, measures contain references to immigration that could be construed as comprehensive immigration. And he said, well, the president certainly favors that. That is not within the treaty. Congressman Paul Ryan said this is an urban legend to say that this is somehow backdoor for comprehensive immigration. Chairman Goodlatte sent out a letter saying that he's been assured nothing is there by uh, USTR Froman. My question is this, who's right on this issue? Senator Sessions said, it does indeed contain parts of the Comprehensive Immigration Bill. So you have a split between the administration and some Republican members and other Republican members on this issue. Who's right? Thank you. And, and the answer is that I don't know. We, I have asked my staff to look at every single piece of literature, to look at whatever they can on the deal, to get as much information as possible. We have not found any evidence yet that there is something in the deal dealing with immigration. 
Uh, I do know it probably mentions, and I haven't seen this exactly, but it probably does mention some L visas. You know, L visas are, are currently allowed in under the our, our current law. Uh, but but we are getting trying to get to the bottom of this because I I keep getting calls from my constituents about it, and we keep telling them that we haven't found any evidence of that. Um, you know, maybe I need to. To con I have not contacted uh, Senator Sessions. Maybe he needs to give me the information that he has. But I have not seen anything on that. But we are concerned about it because we keep hearing about it in, in the district. Hmm.